The revelations also don't support the heated rhetoric coming from the far right in particular. <coughs> if Elon Musk is really trying to be as transparent as he claims, he would release all the material, as former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is calling on him to do. Selecting items that may prove Musk's argument is not the unbridled transparency and clarity that Musk seems to be promising. Joining me now is conservative media analyst and the co-host of the Death of Journalism podcast, John Ziegler. John, good to see you. All right, I've been doing a lot of talking here, John. Let me just get some of your thoughts on this. Well, I agree with a lot of what you said, Dan, and let me just try to amplify some of it from a never-Trump conservative perspective. I agree that the idea that Twitter determined who won the 2020 election is ridiculous. Uh, Donald Trump is obviously one of the most divisive figures in the history of American politics, and we were going through a very divisive time with the entire COVID narrative, and those two issues were what was going to determine people's votes. Hunter Biden's laptop or anything that happened on Twitter was not going to do that. Now, that being said, Twitter, I think, is a little bit more influential on the rest of the media than you're giving it credit for. Let's be clear, from a media perspective, what is Twitter? Twitter is a public focus group forum where media outlets and media commentators can go to find out which stories and which narratives are the most popular with their target demographic. And if certain elements and certain voices are de-amplified or outright censored or certain stories are censored, that's going to have a trickle-down effect in the rest of the media. So there's no question that this had some level of impact. The election was not in Donald Trump's reach to win. However, Dan, it's important to point out, this election was much closer than people realized when it came to coming to a 269-269 yeah. tie. Donald Trump was 44,000 votes away in three states from setting this country basically into civil war because this would have gone to the House of Representatives. So maybe in a bizarre, somewhat facetious way, this was a good thing that this happened the way that it did. But there's no way that Trump would have actually won this election because well, of media coverage. But let me ask you this, John, in, in the whole, on the whole, with all these Twitter revelations, it, I thought this has been underwhelming to me. And I, and I say underwhelming, meaning not rooting for one or the other, just saying I kind of expected that Twitter employees were going to have said dumber things, more outrageous things, more intentional things in an effort to help Biden. I was thinking that there'd be more overt examples of government officials getting involved. At least so far, that stuff doesn't seem to be there. Well, I was reminded of the old Casablanca line, I'm shocked, shocked to find gambling going on in here. I mean, no, no conservative is surprised by the culture inside of Twitter. But uh, I'm glad, Dan, that you're at least taking this seriously, because it's a very serious issue. Most yep. of the rest of the mainstream media is trying to ignore it. And the most depressing part of this whole entire saga to me is the normalization of this issue of censorship. And yep. that should never happen in the media in America. And I think that has broad-reaching implications. John, good to see you as always. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan.